Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing markers. So I'm going to be reviewing touch markers. These are the touch twin markers from Shin Shinhan Art. I believe they are Korean. So story time, just very quick brief story time to explain sort of the background. I went to the art store yesterday, of course, because that's all I do is I go to the art store. I went to the art store yesterday determined to buy Copic markers. I was absolutely determined. I knew I wanted to get them. I've been wanting them for a while. Um, but this time around, I had a gift card for my birthday, which was about a week ago, and I was dying to spend this gift card, this free money I had. So the art store that I actually go to in Berlin is called Modular. There's actually two that I go to. I go to Bösna, 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 and Modular. Modular is uh, the bigger art store. It has two floors. I think there's two floors has two floors and it has a lot of things to buy which is why i prefer it <laughs> anyways so i get to modular i look for the copic markers now the copics are actually behind a desk and they're secured with a locking key behind like a glass wall so you're actually supposed to ask the guy that's working there to have access to them and obviously they're kind of like prized possessions so people tend to steal them, which is why they need to be kind of like in jail, locked behind glass walls. So yeah, I asked the guy to check, test them out. Coincidentally, the Copics were right next to the touch markers. So these guys, the touch. Spoiler alert, I obviously bought these, but to make a short story long, I saw that the Copics were next to the touch markers and I've known touch all my life. I actually got a really big pack of them for my birthday about 10 years ago and I used them on and off and I always thought they were a really nice quality for beginners, for people who are beginning to use markers. I stopped using markers, obviously. I just didn't really like the... I just didn't really like using them. I preferred using other things. And recently I've started to use markers again. So you can see here, here's just one small sample of the variety of markers that I have. Um, these are the old touch, so these are kind of like vintage, I guess you can call them. So they look like this. And these were not the brush tip, these were the fine tip, like I think the, just like the fine tip here. And they also had the broad chisel tip at the end. So that's how they look like 10 years ago. I mean, these are about 10 years. They still work really well, which is why I already kind of knew the brand and I wasn't afraid to go with the cheaper one this time. At the art store, um, I was able to test out the Copics and I was also able to test out the new uh, touch markers. So these, I don't know if they're new or not, but to me, they're very new compared to these, these guys. I was able to touch, uh, I was able to touch, I was able to test them. And I was very curious to see how the brush tip worked because I've never really had markers with brush tip and I really wanted to use it incorporated with my sort of like watercolor work and just general mixed media work. So I, I tried the Copic and I tried the Touch side by side. I chose a color that was very close. So both for Copic and for Touch, the color was sort of the same. It was called differently, but it was very similar. I was looking for skin color. I was looking for skin tone color. And I found one that was very similar for both brands and I tried them side by side on the testing paper. So actually in the end, they both looked exactly the same. Now, maybe it's because of my untrained eye. Maybe I'm not just, you know, I'm a noob when it comes to marker work. So to, uh, to me, it made no difference whether Copic worked better or the touch, whether the Copic worked better, I can't, I couldn't really tell. All I knew is that the color was very similar. It worked really well in terms of applying it on the paper. The marker, like the touch marker, felt really, really nice in the hand. It's very smooth and it's oval shaped. What difference to me was actually the price. So at this art store, the Copic markers for a single one went for five euro and 80 cents. So five euros and 80 cents, I'm not sure what that translates to in your currency, like US or Canadian currency. And the touch markers went for three euros and 80 cents. So there was a two euro difference per marker. I don't mind spending more for art supplies. I, to me, it's okay. If I'm paying for the quality and that's all that matters to me, which is why I was intent on going to buy Copics. So yeah, so the price difference was sort of like, to me was whatever, but in the end it actually turned out really nice because I was able to get a couple more colors. These touch markers are refillable so you can refill the ink on the inside um the nibs themselves are also change uh, changeable so you can change them as well one of the differences between copic and touch is that the copic markers there's a lot more colors available um so i think they have like 
a variety. Oh, I can't remember the number. It was like over 300 for sure. I think it was like 370. Correct me if I'm wrong. 350. I can't, I can't really remember. It was like 350, let's say 350 um, color choices, while the touch have around 207. So you're missing like, I don't know, whatever, like 140 colors. But in the end for myself as just like a hobbyist, um, yeah. 140 colors difference to me is okay. I mean, I have all of the colors I need. Another difference between Copic and Touch, so because of the popularity of the Copic markers, the guy at the art store was actually explaining to me that most people choose Copic for good reason, um, but because of that, the availability, so like if a marker color runs out and you're looking for it and you wanna get it and it's a very popular color, a lot of the times they do not have it in stock and it could take a few weeks for it to actually be in stock again. Now, I don't know if this depends on the art store, if it depends on the region, I don't know, manif or the, the like factory. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know how it works, but I kind of trusted his opinion or like what he was telling me because at this particular art store, which was a pretty big one in Berlin, already I saw that there were many colors missing. All the skin tones that I wanted to get, they were out of stock. So like right then and there, I just couldn't buy it while I was shopping. So that's another reason why I went for touch. Now for these markers, I mean, surely you can buy them on Amazon as well and your local art store. So maybe you can just pre-order them online or order them on the pre-order, it's not a video game. Maybe you can just order them online. And for touch, for the touch markers, I saw like side by side immediately in like the case itself. Um, there were a few missing, of course, but there was so much more choice. I was able to choose the colors I wanted right away rather than waiting or ordering online, for example. So I also did some research online um, that's what I'm looking at right now on my, my screen. So for the touch markers, sorry, I'm like reading the screen right here. They do have the name of the color on the tip and it also has the color, the true color of the marker. So here's pink and here's gray. Um, now what I found was actually that the color here is pretty accurate to the actual ink, um, which is really nice. So you get a pretty accurate reading of that. And there's also a blender marker that's available. I haven't actually bought that. I don't know why I didn't buy it. I should have bought it. There's a blender marker available. Um, there are two types of markers. So you've got the chisel name, but you also got the brush tip. They are alcohol-based ink. And for the Copic markers, so apparently here, price per Copic sketch, they seem to have different kinds. Uh, like on Amazon here, it goes for about $7, seven dollars, seven dollar thirty. So yeah, you're paying almost ten bucks for one marker. So it's it's a bit pricey if you're if you don't know what, really what you're doing, and if you're just like a hobby artist, like like I am, I would go with the alternative, like sort sort of the cheaper one. You kind of get the same bang for your buck, I guess you can say. And I think as I progress with the markers. I'm um, just like working with markers. I think that I would eventually upgrade to Copic markers um, because there's a huge variety of things you can do with them um, and, and there's more colors that are available to you. So I think that eventually I would progress to that. But for now, these are a really good alternative and something that I would definitely recommend that you guys try if you're interested in markers. So as always, if you have anything to add to this conversation, I don't know, like, this is sort of like a debatable topic because many people are pretty loyal to Copic markers. I also wanted to kind of jump on the bandwagon, but I got kind of sold by these guys. It's a little bit of a difference, but not that much. And I think that they're perfectly fine for what they're doing. So if you guys have tried Copic markers or these touch markers, um, please let me know in the comments below if you guys have see any differences or like if you prefer one over the other, why I would love to know um, if you have any advice or maybe any other brand that you guys think is close to, to Copic markers. I would also like to know that. Um, cause I like trying new things and buying new things and you know, so, um, yeah, so comment below and if you like this review, it was a very quick one, give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Bye!